Okay, so um, what I would like to show you now is a, is a little toy that I, I got for the studio recently. I'm always looking for new, you know, inspiring things in forms of new plugins or drum machines or synthesizers. And I've always, um, I've always wanted to, to try, you know, if I could make music with the iPad. I just recently got one and, uh, and I was a bit skeptical about using it in, in studio and... Um, so I, I had a long a long trip some weeks back and uh, I figured that was the best time to try it. So I downloaded loads of applications and um, I had a few flights and train journeys. And I came across what was suggested uh, by most of my friends as the best application, which is the MS-20. This very brilliant application from Korg, which has the MS-20 synth and drum machine and most importantly the sequencer. I have had the, the MS-20 for many years, so I'm very familiar in the programming of it and the way it should sound. And I was, first of all, I was very impressed by how you know, nice it sounds and how they managed to recreate this, this sort of very gritty filters and, and the resonance and the LFO. It's, it's really, it's really a, a, good, a good reproduction of the real thing. But what really interested me is the sequencer part because I've always wanted to buy this one, the, the original one, but it's pretty rare and, and expensive. And I've always found that uh, with analog sequencing, you can create certain atmospheres and mood, which it's very difficult to replicate with, you know, with MIDI or arpeggiator or modern instruments. So um, basically the way, I, I don't really know how to use it properly, but the, the first thing I've done is I just went to check out and uh, this thing as a drum machine, fairly simple drum machine. And the sounds are all generated within the MS-20, so they sound particularly, particularly analog and, and, and dirty somehow. And then it has the main synth section, of course, with all the oscillator and filters and envelopes and everything else. And then, you know, it has the pattern where you can actually create songs. So if you start from scratch, it sounds something like this. And then you can start writing obviously your drums you know and uh, I was just playing around with it this is very familiar it looks like uh, like just an old school drum machine and then you would go on the analog sequencer which is where the magic happens and by moving the knobs you actually choose the pitch the filter the octave you can assign them pretty much to everything so by moving them You can open the gate. And basically play around and create different melodies. Now this one is not the best, but by changing into other patterns, I was playing around with it for a while. My my the guy that was sitting next to me on the airplane didn't quite enjoy it because I kind of got into it and it was very fidgety. So basically I started playing with it and also with the effects and I started really liking this this tone, you know. But then I thought, okay, that's pretty much it, you know, I'm having fun now and it stays here. Until I went a bit to study the manual and I found out that you can actually export the single separate tracks via Dropbox uh, in wave forms and that was really something that, that clicked on me. When I came back to studio I had a bunch of sequences. Now these are all random ones but I was trying and I had a bunch of sequences and I thought okay let's let's try to work on one in particular and I've exp I came here exported it in Dropbox and I had straight away the files on my desktop here and I could just load them within Cubase. And um, this song I'm showing you now, which still has no title, is called iPad Beat, uh, has been made pretty much 80% within this very application. The drum sounds, the main synth line, the bass line, everything comes from here. So it's a work in progress, but you can kind of feel a bit so the drum machine 
what we're hearing now is the drum machine within the MS-20. Very, very simple, which uh, I put in a, in a drum group and you know added a bit of tube compression. And I really wanted to write something which sounded pretty old school. I'm a big fan of old school acid and Chicago stuff. And, and they were really using drum machines, very simple drum machines with very complicated patterns sometimes. And I like the grit you know, of, of that sound. So in this case, when I was writing this, I just, you know, exported first of all the drum parts, to which I've added probably the only thing that comes from Cubase is actually this added open hat, which is from, I think, from machine. Everything else is from, you know, this very application. And then I just exported some of the synth parts. So again, stuff I've done with the, with the sequencer, and it sounds like this. So this is actually just the Dropbox export from iPad. I'm gonna mute. So that's how it actually sounds. It's very, very bassy because I've made, you know, I was working with a bass sound in here. But I really like it because it, it, it has a sort of the swing to it. It doesn't really close precisely at the end of the loop. It's really, it's really particular. So I thought I could do the main feature of the song with it, um, but simply it was too bassy. I mean, it, it was basically going on top of everything else. It didn't have, it, it was taking too much space. So again, a little of a tube compressor to make it a bit more punchy. This is the tube compressor that comes from Cubase and uh, another compressor just to keep it in check because it really has this wobble thing that it's a bit complicated to keep in check. So two compressors and then a first EQ where I removed the low end and, and a bit of the medium frequency and I tried to make it a bit brighter. A second EQ which does pretty much the same but a bit on higher frequencies and on top of it a very, very discreet delay, uh, which at the moment is on zero, but will be automated through the song, and will create some you know, different patterns. And then from the very same pattern here, because I wasn't, you know, I'm still not very good with it, but I, I like to play around and go a bit random, I managed to write a second line with the same sound that kind of completes this phrase, so it goes on top of it. And this one is chopped even more, like it's even more cut. It's really only on the high, medium, high frequencies. And as a bit of guitar rig, which I pretty much use in every song. Again, EQ, rotary effect. So it's off from the center and wouldn't, you know, wouldn't clash with the previous one. And again, a bit of compression. 3 dBs from UAD 1176 to keep it in check. So this was the main idea of the song and it came again just by me playing during a flight with this and I just found amazing the fact that then you know everything is ready and available for for us to you know to put it in in any computer and just work on it. So the main idea was within this is pretty much all in this very application. And all I just want, I just felt like because I chopped the 303, I call it 303 sound even though it's not a 303, but it reminds me because of the arpeggiator and the, the sequencer. I just felt like chopping these two kind of left some space for, you know, for me to fill up on, on the subs. So I simply opened one of my favorite synths, which is a free synth from Tal. These guys are, are really incredible. They, they've been producing amazing synths and effects for many years just you know for free you can you know send them money as a donation i've done it a few years back because i really use all of their scenes and the delays and the chorus is unbelievable everything that they do is really amazing and now they actually started producing um plugins that you actually buy the juno and the sh101 this week or two weeks ago came out and it's just unbelievable it sounds very warm and i use the noisemaker on pretty much all of my records for normally for very simple tasks like just a sub or or sometimes even for lead sounds it's just very warm and it's very easy it's so easy to program and it's so um, easy on the cpu that i can open many many of them and, and never have a problem so in this case all it does is
is a little sabby sabby line underneath the main we can barely hear it but in the club it, it makes the whole difference it just goes literally it just takes the harmonics you know it stays in between 50 and, and 80 which is where i want it to be and it kind of com you know it goes together with the 303 and of course they both are side chained to to the kick so they have a bit of bounce so this is the main idea behind it and again it's it's besides the sub was all worked in here and then i I actually once played only this very beat, you know, in a club to check out if it was working, if the idea was good. And then I, I found out that I wanted to have to add a bit of drama to it because the idea for me of this song is that it will have a vocal. So I'm now working with a singer and she's about to send me parts to, to actually finish the record. And uh, I wanted the song to go somewhere to create a tension, you know, together with the lyrics. So I actually added just a couple of, of more sounds on top of the of the iPad work. One of them is again from Tal. It's just uh, this, this Juno thing and it just creates this little wobbly impression which opens. But most importantly, um, the, the most important sound in this case is done by maybe my favorite VST at the moment, which is Diva, which uh, is really amazing and it sounds fat and I love the fact that gets um you can really you can really shape a tone with it like changing the combination of filters and and the oscillators and even the envelopes which can be really snappy or a bit more relaxed you know in a moog way or a bit more snappy like a roll and stuff you can really give it a, a tone and i'm using it uh, you know in in many many songs even though it's a bit cpu hungry but you know with a good computer you, you you're able to work on it and what this synth does it creates this sort of so it's just this atmosphere which i imagine will go with the lyrics when the tension is building up Space for vocals and back with this little crash actually from an orchestra so yeah basically you know this song is very 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 simple it's just the you know I wanted to show it to you because the main the main idea of it it came with you know within an application you know and I, I kind of like now the idea of working sometimes limit myself to one application or, or one synth to, to you know to work possibly a whole song or the you know most part of it, the, big, the biggest part of it, because you know, with all the limitations, as we know, you know, you get you get more creative. So in this case, even the drums, normally I would go for drum sounds, which would be a bit more, maybe a bit heavier or a bit more punchy. But I figure that because you know the main sound, the main the main idea behind this is this you know MS20 weird atmosphere. The drums could actually work by being that simple and really sounding from a synth instead of a proper drum machine you know and the kick is pretty small and the snare and the clap also are, are not not very massive or very complicated the pattern is pretty simple and um, then again you know just by playing with an analog sequencer you can come up with lines like, uh, you know that you, you would never think of like this weirdness you can either do with the 303 which i used to have and sometimes you would program a pattern not really knowing what was going on and then suddenly it was an amazing line and you would have to record it straight away in audio because the moment you moved it or you'd switch it on and off even though it had memories it would never ever be the same and I actually as soon as I finished uh, exporting the sounds on this record I started playing around with that sequence so I actually don't have it anymore I didn't even save it because again I wanted to commit to an old school thing as in I've got the sequence I try to record it as clean as possible with no automations and stuff so when I'm gonna finish the record and I'm gonna have the singer I'm gonna then play around with with automations and delays and you know and make it moving within the project but because I only had one chance in my head to export that 
303 line i wanted it to be of course as clean as possible and you know without playing with it too much and then it's gone then now i programmed another six or seven patterns they all have the same the same sound but they all sound different and i'm going to use them in different songs and i kind of like the idea of having now the the ipad in studio or every time as one element only like it could be a drum machine um the other day i was playing also with the drum machine now everyone knows the password of, of my ipad but i was i was playing with the dm1 which is a pretty amazing drum machine as well and um, again you know you can really write some some good ideas because you can automate lots of lots of the effect you can automate the pitch you can create all these And you know, add other stuff. Add. It really, it really brings me back to the time when um, you know, back in the days, I used to make music with all separate stuff. You know, there was one machine that did the drums, one synth in my head that was for the the bass, one synth that was for the pads. And you know, I love to work in the, in in the box, and and it's it's very convenient, and you can really have some incredibly good results. But more and more, I'm I'm now going back to buying or you know experimenting with stuff that does one thing so i'm limited so for example i just programmed this some days ago on the train and i'm gonna export it again it has the same function of exporting to dropbox the separate tracks and then you know that's gonna be my drums for one song i'll try not to add machine on it or maybe you know but i like to be limited and i like to see the ipad every time as one single instrument you know and of course now with the audio bus and other technology you know we are able to use three or four of them at the same time but to be honest i was very skeptical about how i could use this thing in the studio and i found that for me it works as long as i keep it doing one thing so i see it as you know machine or the mini brute or something else in this case it's a drum machine in the other case is a is an ms20 sequencer and I, you know, with the fact that I can export it, it becomes straight away with Wi-Fi an instrument um, within Cubase, pretty much. And with the new, you know, softwares and, and developers now, we are able to sync uh, very soon and, and, and put MIDI and, and control stuff within Cubase from the iPad or even sequence analog real synths through Wi-Fi. You know, it's it's really I'm getting really excited about what's going on with with this machine because. You know, there is lots of money behind it and there is lots of very creative and interesting people which are developing some crazy stuff which we will see soon. And I was very skeptical, but now I'm really excited about, you know, to see what's going on and it will become more and more, a, you know, a part of our studios. And this is the first example for me and it's the first song I actually worked within, within the iPad and I'm very happy, you know, it's, I, I can't wait to receive the, the vocals and finish it, but this came up of me playing you know one once with it i can imagine if i would actually study <laughs> the, the the application i could you know even develop even more but even used as a, as a scratch pad just one line that can become something completely different once i mean i'm within the world i know well which is cubase and i can chop it up and or put in put it in a sampler and make it a completely different line out of it it's just very exciting to have all you know infinite toys within one physical object and using it in, in you know in studios. I find it very, very exciting.